We just pulled up at the park lane for 48 hours, just waiting for it to stop. It has not stopped raining for the last three days. So it's just stopping. Him and me are going to give it another go. We're going to be looking at the Ridge Monkey dual stove. As I know a lot of you have been asking me to do a little review on it. So we're going to be using it this session. I've also managed to source a 10 piece pan set off eBay, which I think is rather good for the dollar. So without further ado, join me and the Port Mon Monster for 48 hours in the Park Lake. Welcome to this week's vlog. If this is the first time that you've come across my channel and you like these type of videos and you want to see more, you may want to think about hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification icon and you'll be notified every time I go live or release a new video. So, all loaded up. We've been having a little walk, me and him. Me and the pork chop. Haven't seen anything yet. Nothing at all. We're about halfway around the lake. There's only one other guy on. I've spoke to him. He hasn't seen anything, he's been here a night. There's been nothing out for about two weeks. It's mild, it's gonna be 11 degrees, well, tomorrow, today. It's gonna to stay between seven and eight at night time, so it's mild. Southerly wind, which is blowing up that end of the lake. So we're going around this way and that's gonna be our last stop if we don't see anything on the way. So I've stopped in a couple of places, I've had a good look, and now I'm looking here to see this is a, just a good vantage point to see where there's any fish. So, pork chop, he's having a little munch, but someone's coming up the, coming up the path. So, we're gonna have a look out here. We've stopped me and him. Here he's having a little woof up, look. A little woof up. Then yeah. Little woof up, but someone's walking past. So yeah, so, we had a little stop here. A little bit of slack water here, see if you can see any bubblers or any Anything showing anywhere, nice and overcast, just stopped raining. Looks absolutely spot on, I was going to have a seat, but that's wet. Yeah, I don't think so somehow. So all you can do, when there's nothing to go on, nothing's been out for two weeks. People have been over here, haven't seen anything. You've got to keep them watching, we've got a couple of hours before dark, so I'm in no rush to set up. Unless, of course, it gets to, it's just for dark, and we don't see any fish, then I'm going to have to make a decision where I'm going to fish. If you can do that, guys, if you can turn up a lake first thing in the morning or last couple of hours of darkness, last couple of hours before it gets dark, see if you can see the fish, because that's when they're going to be most active in, in April and May, you know, in the spring and the summer. Early mornings, last thing at night. So it's raining now, so we're just going to keep on looking, keep on pushing that barrel around, see if we see anything. See you in a while. Welcome back. We've had a bloody good look round. We walked all the way up the far end of the lake and had a look in the bay up there, sat there for about half an hour. Didn't see anything. And that wind, even though it's a lot warmer, a lot milder, it had a little bit of a cold coldness to it. So we had a look in here earlier on, stopped for about 10, 15 minutes, didn't see anything as well, but we've decided to come back and fish just on the side, on the back of it out there. To an area I know well, because we've caught quite a few fish out of here over the last season. So I know the swim well, it's about 45 minutes before dark. So I'm just gonna ping three singles out there and see what happens, move in the morning. If I see anything, I'm gonna look, listen, watch, get up first light, listen tonight as well, and see if I hear or see anything, and then move or decide what to do accordingly in the morning, first thing. He's just about ready, he's walked around the whole lake. He wants to get in the bag and go to sleep as usual. So, without further ado, I'm going to unpack the old barra, get sorted, get the rods out before it gets too dark to cast. So, see you when I'm all sorted.
Okay. Set the bivvy up. I managed to get the rods out as well. There on the dance floor. <laughs> oh look, he thinks I'm talking to someone, doesn't he? He always does the same thing, doesn't he? As a little snoozy mondo gets in the bag and then as soon as he thinks I'm talking to someone. Oh, that, that makes a change, doesn't he? He's got his snozzle in the bag. Oh, he's out. He's having a little, having a little look about. Right, so where are we at? What's happening? That wind's died down a bit. Look, you can see it's flat, calm out there. Looks really good. And I did see a little bit of fizzing going on. About 60 yards out where I've got my right hand rod. I've got one rod out towards the corner. One rod straight out and one to the left. All about 60 to 70 yards. In a little trough. There's a nice trough out there. All three went down with a donk. So I'm more than happy with that. They went out there. Just fishing singles because it's not been fishing very well. I'm going to put the water temperature in a minute and see what that tells us. What sort of story that says. We've had a lot of rain. The rain might be cold. We don't know, do we? So that might have put them off. But nothing's been seen. Nothing's been out for two weeks. So it's been fishing very, very slow. But all we can do is keep on keeping on. If you're not down here, you won't catch them sitting indoors watching Coronation Street, will you? got to get out this is the time when it could switch on you could have a fish of a lifetime looking beautiful there's only one other guy on he's right over there right up the other end of the lake you can tell it's not fishing very well but there's no one over here when I come over here last Monday if you remember there was 15 people on I couldn't even park my car my van could I so three hinge stiffies on three singles two whites and a pink like I always do well not always but at the moment until the old that water temperature gets 10 and stays at 10 then I'll probably go on the bottom base the fish mills the monster X which I was using last year looking good everything's sorted out in there I've got to get me uh, stove out well talking about stoves I'm gonna be using the dual stove from Ridge Monkeys. I know a lot of you guys have been messaging me saying what do you think of it is it any good have you used one so I purchased one at the the what was it the big one show managed to get one so I'm going to use that for the next couple of sessions and we'll have a good look at it tomorrow also someone give me the heads up on this pan set 10 piece pan set from Terra Hiker really good company I've ordered loads of stuff that little 20 quid 15 quid stove that I've done a review on I'll put the link up there that's from Terra Hiker as well really reliable stove very good stove it's comparable with the Boolean stove it's a little bit smaller maybe not as powerful but it's very good, so check that out if you haven't seen that already. I think they're about 15 quid or something, or even less when I got mine. So, no, look. Get out of there. Cheeky sod. I'll get you some in a minute. God, he loves it, doesn't he? Right, so yeah, so 10 piece, cook set, it's got a, it's got a, um, it's got a kettle in there pans little things to eat with and so have a good look at that tomorrow's when he's writing about i'm looking at you now filming and his paws going 25 million to a dozen in there little towels wagging and he's dying to get in that bag so i'm gonna have to go and sort him look i'm gonna have to go and sort him out right just watching as i'm talking to you he'd be doing a sneaky one when i'm not looking he's in the snozzle of being there so i better go and sort him out i'm gonna get the kettle on I'm gonna get me to hear him you might be able to hear him watch him look so I'm going to get the kettle, I'm going to get the dual stove out. We're going to have a look at that and we're going to have a look at the 10 piece pan set tomorrow once we're sorted. So not long till dark now. Just going to enjoy it. Hopefully we'll see one. Nothing's been seen, like I said. So we're sort of winging it really. I just, my sixth sense said, come in here. You know the spots. I've done one cast on each spot. Bang. We're angling. Now let's enjoy it. Cup of tea on the go. Biscuits. We might even have biscuit of the week tomorrow or later on tonight. <laughs> we might do that as a weekly thing now. Biscuit of the week is, right, okay. That's what we're gonna do later on. We're gonna do biscuit of the week. Each week's gonna be a different biscuit. I want you to put in the comments what your favorite biscuit is that I should try. I should give a go to showcase on the vlogs. So it's going to be a different one. It's going to be 52 different ones. Well, as many vlogs as we do. Right, I'm going to go. I'm going to stop nattering and chatting on. I'm going to get myself sorted. Get that first cup of tea down me, Greg. 
wash the water. Hopefully, we'll see something. Sort him out. Look, have you ever seen that? A dog rubbing his bloody backside on the grass. <laughs> he ceases to amaze me, him, I tell you. All I could see out of the corner of my eye then when I was bloody talking to you was this white thing going across the bloody, skidding across the bloody grass. He's out of control and he's showing off. But he can't look. He's showing off because he can't get his bloody treats. Right, I'm going. See you soon. Very quiet night, apart from the, the bloody persistent rain. It's only just stopped raining. Look at how wet everything is, look. Absolutely drenched. And we got more rain today, more rain tonight, and pack up tomorrow when it's absolutely pouring down again. Two weeks running. Oh, all chops out. So yeah, very, very, very quiet last night. Although I did have a couple of liners early on just after dark on the left hand rod, the middle rod. It could be pike because they're quite active at the moment or it might be the old silverfish. Warmish last night. Doesn't feel as warm as what it should be. Not really too sure about, about that. But it's, um, I, mean, I would expect to be feeling a little bit warmer but must be that, way, that, that rain making everything cold and miserable. Although it looks good, I haven't seen a bloody thing. Nothing at all out there, nothing. Don't know what's going on. Nothing out for two weeks. The odd fish seen over the last couple of weeks. But apart from that, absolutely nothing. Very, very, very quiet. Could have something to do with the rain. But don't forget two weeks ago, it's minus five. So, you know, something down like yo-yo. I'm pretty sure that rain ain't helping, that's for certain. Although the daffodils are out, it's nice to see them. Which to me means spring is here, but look at him. He loves it, doesn't he? He's enjoying it anyway, he's just tucking himself away out of the rain. But yeah, it's um, yeah, a little bit disappointing at the moment. But it can change like that. It really does only take one bite. I know you hear me say it, and it's one of my little taglines I use. But it, it can change just like that. They could just switch on. Which they will do eventually, you just got to be at the lake when they do switch on. School boy error, I forgot my water temperature gauge. I reckon it's between about 7 and 8 degrees that water. Hasn't warmed up enough yet to start putting a bit of bait in. Soon as it does, I'm going to be, you know, getting the old... As soon as it gets to 10 degrees and above and stays there for a week or so, I should be starting to introduce the old fish mills. With some oils and you know a bit of ingredients and some powders you know like the hydrolyzed liver powder and the you know the beta stim and the hydrolyzed liver liquid and all the all the goodness salmon oil as it gets warmer you know all the good stuff that the fish love just to get a maximum attraction to the area i'm fishing so yeah it looks good out there but nada nothing at the moment so yes, we're going to have a quick look at this beauty. Come up here, look, while he's having a little donder around. Like I promised, beginning the video and last week, I managed to get myself one of these beauties, the Ridge Monkey Quad Stove. Now I've got the quad one because I do a lot of cooking on the bank. I know you guys have been on at me for ages. What do you think of the quad stove? What do you think of the Ridge Monkey stove? Do a review on it. So at the big one show a couple of weeks back, Magic get hold of one of the Ridge Monkey quads. Now, used it last night. Must say, initial impressions are good. It's very, the first thing you notice is, is it's, it's very sturdy. It, it's, it stands there, when you put your kettle on, nothing's moving. It's got a very wide base, square in shape, very, very stable. 
And another good thing, I mean there's lots of good things about it that I've sort of found as I'm using it. Adjustable legs, so you know when you've got those those banks which aren't quite straight, but no bank is straight, is it? Well, you know, you find it difficult, I find it difficult to get a flat bit of surface so you can put your normal stove in, get your kettle on without it tipping over easily or whatever. So, four adjustable legs, really like that, and you can adjust them up to about an inch or two either way. So I like that. Now in the quad kit, I mean you can buy them separately. You can buy the Ridgemaking stove on its own or you can get the quad kit which is two. And the kit consists of two heads. You've got a primary head and you've got a secondary head. The secondary head fits into the primary head which just slots in, fixes in place, seals itself. It's self-sealing so no gas can get away. You get two bags for ease of carrying, a little cord at the top which tightens it all down and the actual stoves fit nicely in that bag so you can put them in your, your rucksack or your barrow bag or whatever, keeps them all clean and safe and all in one little place. Also you get with that kit, let's just get, I'll just get one out, hang on, let's have a look, let's have a look, oh, get one of these which is a little stand which clips onto the cooker. It's adjustable, so you can have it at different heights. For your handle, on your pan, or your, I use one of them big Ridge Monkey plates, hot plates, you know, big Ridge Monkey toasty, for doing my steak and all things like that. So that was good to have it straight. It's almost bloody, it's always falling off and other things going on. So they thought about that quite well. That clips on, that's sturdy, that sits there lovely. Also, which I didn't realise you get in the little kit, is a gas canister, um, sort of clip-in, three-legged uh, little attachment, which goes to the bottom of your gas canister, which makes it all sit nice and more, even more stable, so the gas canister can't fall over, which is good, which we like. Didn't even realise you get one of those. So that was a nice little surprise, and something well, I can't think no one else has come up with, so... That, that was good, it keeps your gas canister stable. Now, also you get a Petso ignition on there, which is pretty standard with most cookers nowadays. You get a pe Petso ignite ignition button. You know, a lot of them wear out, so it'd be good to see how long this one lasts, if it lasts forever or it wears out after two or three trips. And I, also, I quite like that it's got a very big head. Look, I'll show you. Look at the head on there, look, that's real big, gives you a wide, a wide capture of the heat. Look. It's a lot bigger than your normal standard stove. So there's another good plus point. Another thing which was interesting, which I found out with it, it's got, hang on, let's get the little bit of a, uh, let's get the little, you get a little instruction manual, tells you all the parts and gives you safety guidelines, all that type of stuff. It's a fine gas control valve. Now, that's that little bit on there, look, with the Ridge Monkey logo on it. And what I like about that is that you put your gas canister on and you, you, you let your gas go through to the cooker. Now, like an idiot, first of all, put the gas on, like I do with a normal cooker, like my Berlin stove and my uh, Terry Hiker stove. And I'm trying to light the bloody thing. I'm trying to light the cooker, right, like an idiot like I normally would do with a normal stove. And nothing's coming out and I'm thinking, oh, I've broke here, it's not working. Then I read the instructions and I see the, uh, what is it, a fine gas control valve. You actually turn it on from there, which is lovely. So I just turn that on, light it, lovely, happy days, made a cup of tea. But what I think that's gonna be useful for is that because you've got like a, when I cook stuff and I wanna simmer it down, I wanna turn that gas down as low as possible. So, and there's a delay from the gas bowl to the cooker. So sometimes you turn it down so low that it turns itself off. So you have to relight it and re-simmer it up and it's a bloody nightmare. That happens quite a lot. So with the two sort of controls, gas goes straight into it. And then with the fine gas control valve, you can get it all the way down and there's no delay, it's there. It's because the, you've got pressure from the gas straight away. It's not trying to catch up through the pipe. So that's another good thing. 
The real test would be tonight, where I think it's going to excel itself, is that I'm, I'll be cooking up a bit of steak, a bit of nice steak as I, as I do. I'm having steak and vegetables, so I'm going to have two cookers on the go, but only one gas bowl. Because of that valve, which goes into the other secondary head, I can cook the steak on the big ridge monkey pan and boil up the vegetables in a separate saucepan, which we're going to talk about later. That's part of the kit that I uh, managed to find on eBay, 10 piece cooking set, which we're going to have a look at as well, out of just one gas bowl. So I can cook the both of them up, have adjustment of how high I want them or how to simmer them, how low with that gas valve from the one gas bottle. So they're only carry two gas bottles. So on the whole, I quite like it so far. Yeah, I've only used it for one night. Tonight I'm gonna to give it a bit of a better test with using the two heads. So we'll see how it goes for the next few weeks and months and, um, but, but I, I already like it. I'm, I'm liking it, so far I'm liking it. I can't see the negatives. I know there was some bad press about it many, many months ago when they first released it about it catching fire and God knows what was happening to it. But fair play to Ridge Monkey, they recalled all the gas stoves, they fixed the problem, sent out new ones, or repaired the ones which were faulty, which were only a few, I believe. Um, you know, fair play to them for doing that. So, speaking to the guys who have got the new ones, and this, this is the, the new ones, it's, um, yeah, they work absolutely fine. So we, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna, I've got an open mind about it. Initial impressions are, like them, re really like it. You've got the two, dual heads and lots of other bits and pieces going on. Look at him, look, he's got himself all caught up. Look, got himself all caught up. Look, bloody idiot, isn't he? Loves it, that's what you get when you've got on a lead. So yeah, look, I've had my first cup of tea on it last night. Been using it since. And yeah, like it. Like it. So we shall see. So stay tuned over the next month or so. And, um, We'll see, see how it goes. Right, back to the fishing. Well, or lack of, should I say. I was hoping, well, I got up this morning, looking around, that I was gonna see fish, be able to move onto them, or they'd be here. But I haven't seen anything. It's really weird. You'd think, with the longer sun, that sunlight hours, that you'd be seeing them. But, look, the sun, the old carrot bun's coming out now, lovely. I'm in a good area, well, can be a good area if the fish are here. They might be here. They might just not be doing anything. They might be feeding on the naturals, but there's a little bit of weed coming up. That natural starts to get in that weed. So they might be feeding on that. With the weather, with the rain, the cold rain going in and up and down and freezing cold two weeks ago, it might just be too much for them. They might be feeding on other stuff or just chilling out and doing their own thing for the time being. So we're gonna carry on. We're not gonna move at the moment because I haven't seen anything to make me move. I'm going to have another cup of tea, like I always do. I bloody, I'll turn into a bloody kettle, I think, one of these days. And you know, listen to it, look. He wants a treat, like he always does in every video now, right? Whenever I'm starting talking, hear him, look. He goes for his treat, he plays up like a little kid. Right, so I'm going to crack on. I'm going to sort the old pork chop out, get the kettle on, keep looking for fish out there, and I'll see you a bit later. Slightly slow. I thought we'd introduce a new section to the vlog this week. Biscuit of the week. This is one of my favourites. Every week we're going to have a new biscuit to show you that you can check out. You can put comments down below in the video whether you like the biscuit, whether you don't, whether there's an alternative which you think is better. So the first biscuit of the week is going to be, look, look, look he wants it already, look is going to be Fox's, let me read it out, Chunky Cookies. Look at them bad boys. Now, if that don't make your mouth water with a nice cup of tea, I don't know what will. Mmm. Great big bits of chocolate, 
chocolate coated on one side and like an oaty sort of meal middle. Oh, that's proper with a cup of tea, cup of Yorkshire tea. I don't think you can go far wrong. In fact, hey, ignite me a bit. Look, what's the verdict? Yep, he scoffed it. That's a five star, five star rating for the foxes. Chunky cookies, extremely chocolatey. The only problem is, you only get seven in a packet. So there you go. That is foxes, chunky chocolate, extremely chocolate biscuits. Biscuit of the week. Comment below. Do you like them? Do you not? What's an alternative? What's better? There you go, biscuit of the week. See you soon. Right, welcome back. Still very, 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 very quiet. Nothing happening. What can you do? Can you give up? Go home? I don't think so. You've got to keep on keeping on, haven't you? So what's the next best thing for fishing? Well, cooking. We've got, look what we've got on. We've got the old steak. Nice bit of steak. And the nice load of old vegetables. So, I just want you to talk to you about, about that a little bit. So I've got a nice bit of rump steak in there from, well actually no, it's ribeye steak from Mrs. B. And a load of vegetables, all cooking up on the Ridge Monkey quad stove set up there, which is lovely. I'm gonna bang that down so that cooks. So, let me talk a little bit about the pan set. Now, just do that. Now the pan set that I was talking to you about, using it up tonight to cook my vegetables in. Now it comes, it's a 10 piece pan set from Terra Hiker. Comes in a drawstring bag, 10 pieces, you've got your big pan, which that is, which is cooking up the vegetables. You've got a kettle, you've got three little bowls that you put food in, not really sure what they're for, what you can use them for. You've got another little water sort of carrier thing in there, another big spoon thing which you can use as well. And you've got like a wooden spoon for stirring things. You've even got a little spongy thing you can use for cleaning. Plus you've got a little frying pan as well. So they're all anodized, it's all good stuff, all comes in that bag, loads of bits and pieces, 10 pieces, all for 19 .99. I found it on eBay. I'll put the link down below so you can have a good look at it. But you get a kettle, you get a big pan like that, frying pan, three bowls, a cleaner, a spoon, you know, case, you know, all for under 20 quid. I don't think you can go wrong really. So testing that out, it's working fine. You know, it does what it does on the, it says on the tin. It's a saucepan and 10 bits of cooking equipment. Cheaper than what I've seen them elsewhere with the name brands and that, that's for certain. So there we go, we're gonna add that, the old steak. We're gonna just turn that over because we need to I need to turn my little bit of steak over because that won't be long and that'll be ready oh I'm looking forward to that tonight look at that look oh mate he's licking a bloody bag out now from the steak steak's in there all ready to go rock and roll still ain't seen nothing really disappointed that weather is pucker look at that look dark overcast low pressure it's gonna rain looks brilliant but no fish don't know what's going on and been a fish out for two weeks thought i would have seen one i mean it's still time we've still got time but don't know i thought i would have seen one this morning for sure oh well what can you do but keep on keeping on that's all you can do can't you Right, I'm going to get sorted out. I'm going to get my dinner on. I'm really looking forward to that. The steak and the vegetables. Proper dinner. If you're not catching, you're not seeing anything, you've got to have a bloody good dinner, haven't you? We've had our dinner, and what a lovely dinner that was. That steak and vegetables. <sighs> lovely. You've got to have a decent bit of grub when you're fishing, especially when you're blanking your ass off like I am. You can see this whole current bun, it's going down about half an hour before the sun sets. Still not seeing nothing and it looks absolutely wonderful out there. It really does look good out there. Still ain't seen nothing. I think we're definitely up against it this trip. 
Same as last trip, not seen anything. Never know, we may get lucky in the night. Now, I haven't recast the rods. Now, you may be thinking, well, you're here for two nights. First night, you got them out all lovely. Why haven't you? Change your baits, recast some new spots, just like you normally would. Well, I'll tell you the reason why. When I got them out yesterday, all three of them landed absolutely perfect. I know the pop-ups I'm using, those System X ones, those fluoro ones, the two whites, one pink, they're buoyant enough to stay up for about a week. So that's not an issue. Have I seen any fish? Have I seen any movement? No. So in my mind, they went down right, the hook bait presentation of the rigs are still perfect. I haven't seen anything for me to warrant recasting them somewhere else. So I might as well leave them. Less disturbance, so I'm not disturbing the area out there, just in case the fish might be there and they decide to feed. When I'm casting on top of them, they're going to skedaddle, aren't they? So that's my thinking behind it. And it's resulted in a few fish over the years, a few bonus fish when not a lot's been happening. If your rods go down, perfect. You haven't seen anything, you're happy with your rigs, the way you see them flying through the air, they landed, on the spot's perfect, then there really is no point in recasting them. Retying on new baits, recasting them to new spots and making a lot of disturbance. Now if I'd seen something move to the right or to the left or where I've positioned my baits, bang, I would have recast, found a spot in that area tonight, 100%. That's my thinking on it anyway. Yeah, it doesn't mean you should do that. That's just what I personally prefer sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes, even if I've seen nothing, I redo them. I just felt that they went down fine and that will do for me. That's good enough for me. Well, we're going to the last night, full of hope, full of, well, anticipation that we may, I'd just like to see one. Just like to see one. I didn't see one last week didn't see one this week and I've been seeing them the odd one throughout the winter had a couple of fish in the winter like you've seen if you've been with me through the winter vlog series but it just seems now when they should be showing should be getting caught nothing's been out for two weeks we haven't seen a fish for two weeks not good is it but that's fishing for you every blank is a step closer to that bite well that's why I keep telling myself anyway there he is, poised, at the ready. He'll be in that bag and be asleep later, I tell you. Right, so, there we go. We're gonna go into the night, full of anticipation, full of hope, wooing those fish onto those hooks. Let's see what happens. Catch you, middle of the night, hopefully, or in the morning. morning. I must admit it's pretty damn cold for April. It's meant to be 12 degrees and it's bloody covered. I put my jacket on, my hat on. He's been in the bag where he's so bloody cold. Yeah not what the forecast said so I think I may have heard one last night. About half eleven lying there getting off to sleep I'm sure I'd have where I couldn't tell you so it had gone quite flat camp it was some distance away but it means they're active it means they're cleaning themselves off or something's happening so you never know 
started a bit of a slow pack up. It's that time that everyone hates, especially when they've had a blankety blank. It's packing up and going home. It's um, been an uneventful trip. I mean, we've still got half an hour before we're wheeling that barra all the way back to the van, off to work. But I'm afraid we resided ourselves to the fact to him and me to having another blank. Which isn't good, but I'm sure soon, hopefully, we'll be getting amongst the fish. It really does only take one bite, and we've got to keep on keeping on, haven't we? Hopefully this weather will improve and get warmer, and I'll remember my temperature gauge next trip, so I can tell how warm the water actually is. So, on that note, if you like these type of videos, guys, and you want to see more of these type of videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification icon, You'll never miss another one of my videos again, or live streams. See ya for the next vlog.